The Honorable Member for Nanaimo, Lady Smith. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am once again standing in this House to talk about solutions to deal with Canada's long-standing problem of abandoned vessel vessels in our marine environment. Uh, the imperative we've talked about many times, uh, there are hazards to navigation, uh, visual pollution impacting tourism, a very strong threat of oil spills which can impact local jobs in the area of aquaculture, um, oil spill risks which can affect marine environment and sensitive coastal ecology, and the fact that there is no government in Canada that will actually take ownership. This is a hole in jurisdiction that's recognized by all parties that we are uh, working very hard to fix. It'll make it easier for coastal communities if we do. I also want to salute the patience and the persistence of coastal communities. They've been trying to ad hoc solutions one vessel at a time in the absence of the federal leadership that we are seeking. Um, and this is having costs. I know it was picked up in the media just a few weeks ago. A uh, member of the Legislative Assembly in British Columbia, Andrew Weaver, who's a Green Party representative, I think quite improperly uh, scolded the municipality of Oak Bay, saying that they should do what the municipality of Saanich has done. In fact, we, we can't pit one community against the other, and I think also his criticism uh, reveals a, a misunderstanding of the fact that if we leave this to the high-capacity municipalities to deal with issues in their own harbours, that squeezes the problem, problem vessels, out into unincorporated areas or more remote regions, which is why again and again we've been calling for a comprehensive coast-wide solution to the problem of abandoned vessels. Uh, so let's talk about solutions. My private member's bill C219 is proposing to make Coast Guard the go-to agency on abandoned vessels. Um, they're already doing a good job, the men and women in Coast Guard, of doing this off the side of their desk, but they don't have clear authority. So my bill proposes to give them that authority to make Coast Guard the receiver of wrecks. We're also pushing very hard for full resources for Coast Guard so they can do that job as one of their uh, you know, central responsibility is one that's well funded. Um, we've also other solutions that I've been proposing uh, that the government support fiberglass recycling, finding new markets for this, these materials, a boat amnesty, bring in your boat, uh, fixing the vessel registration, which has really fallen into disrepair, um, and mechanisms to take a load off the taxpayer, like sending vessel registration funds to a fund, as Washington State has done to deal with the vessels on an emergency basis. Uh, I was just this past week uh, sitting down with some local community leaders. We're planning our presentation to AVICC, which is a local government uh, uh, convention that represents Vancouver Island and Sunshine Coast local governments. Uh, April 8, we're presenting together on solutions to deal with the abandoned vessel problem. This is Lady Smith Mayor Aaron Stone, Samina's Chief uh, John Elliott, and uh, one of the operators of the local marina, Rod Smith from Lady Smith Marine Society. So they're asking what are the details of the Coastal Protection Plan, and I'm really hoping to be able to bring that to the convention April 8 so we can give some good news. Um, it was announced four months ago by the government. Uh, they said that they're reopening a Coast Guard station in St. John's. I wish they were reopening the Comox Coast Guard station on our coast that they closed, that the Liberal government closed, um, but very few details otherwise. So I'm hoping that um, through you, Mr. Speaker, the uh, representative for the Minister of uh, uh, Transport can tell us when is the legislation coming, where is the funding going to be available to coastal communities, what are the specific mechanisms that the government is proposing. I'm concerned the only one that they've raised is criminalizing vessel abandonment, um, and I surely hope that that's not a path the government's going to go down. We're, we're looking for solutions on the ground. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Transport. Mr. Speaker, I'd, I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for Nanaimo Ladysmith for her question, and I share the member's concern about the need to systematically address the problems of abandoned derelict and wrecked vessels and the impact that they present for our coastal communities in particular. This is a problem that has been building for a long time. Over the past year, our government has taken direct action 
to address several of these problem vessels. For example, our government has proceeded to, remove for, to the removal of the Vicky Lynn II in Ladysmith Harbour, British Columbia, and the dismantling and removal of the NB Catherine Spirit in uh, Beauharnois, Quebec, which is both are underway. However, this alone cannot be a vessel-by-vessel -vessel approach. We are committed to a broad, comprehensive strategy and I'm proud that our Prime Minister announced plans for this strategy on November 7, 2016, as part of our Oceans Protections Plan. The cornerstone of the strategy is vessel owner responsibility. We believe that those who act irresponsibly when it comes to end-of-life vessel management should be held accountable. We know Canadians share this view. We heard it loud and clear in our national consultations. Our government intends to table new legislation in 2017 that will prohibit the act of vessel abandonment, while also enabling a more proactive approach to vessels before they become a bigger problem and more costly to remediate. Vessel owners will be responsible and liable for the costs associated with vessel cleanup. Alongside this new legislation, there, we will strengthen systems that allow the identification of vessel owners so we can hold to account those who act irresponsibly. We will also join 30 other countries and move to adopt the Nairobi International Convention on the removal of wrecks. This will ensure vessel owners are fully liable and responsible for the costs of removal of a wreck resulting from a maritime accident or an act of nature. These new measures mean that vessel owners will no longer be allowed to walk away from a vessel that they do not want or do not properly maintain without the possibility of sanctions. Finally, we cannot ignore the suite of legacy vessels that are already affecting our coastlines and communities. While developing a longer-term solution, which I have already laid out in the short term, our government will support the cleanup of priority vessels in our coastal communities and assess the requirements for larger priority commercial vessels. Transport Canada is working closely with the Canadian Coast Guard and other federal partners so we can leverage each department's expertise and make the most efficient use of our resources. We're also actively engaged with concerned governments, communities and stakeholders across the country as we develop our plan. And they will be important partners moving forward. The challenges and therefore the solutions are complex. But our government is demonstrating leadership on the issue, and we are confident we have the right approach. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Nanaimo, Lady Smith. I appreciate the uh, Minister's representative, the Parliamentary Secretary, echoing back you know, our shared commitment to find a solution to this. But I'm very concerned that the headline is the prohibition of vessel abandonment. I mean, the laws exist already to end the government should be enforcing them. And we've already, owners are already responsible, they're already liable, and boat owners can already be taken to court to remove a vessel, and we have examples right now, the Farley Mowat vessel in Shelburne, the uh, feds went to court to force the owner to pay fines um, and to be arrested or imprisoned. That's happening already. But the problem is you cannot fine uh, uh, owner who's himself derelict, unable to pay, this is part of the problem, is great financial insecurity of people that just can't keep their vessels up anymore. Um, but also you can't um, find an owner that you cannot find. Vessel registration is a mess, and I really want to have the government's assurance this is a priority, that they will fix vessel registration and they will make every owner pay into a fund that then is available to deal with vessels on an emergency basis so this doesn't stay on the backs of taxpayers. The Honourable Parliament Secretary to the Minister of Transport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I, I again take the opportunity to mention that in our efforts to restore and protect marine ecosystems and habitats as part of our $1.5 billion Oceans Protections Plan, we will be taking measures to address abandoned and derelict vessels in Canadian waters. This will include the introduction of new legislation to prohibit vessel abandonment and, based on the polluter pay principle, increase vessel owner responsibility and liability for derelict and wrecked vessels. We will work with other levels of government to clean up priority small, smaller legacy vessels posing risks to our communities. We recognize the threats 
threats that abandoned derelict and wrecked vessels pose to Canadians and our environment. We're taking a responsible approach to address this very complex issue. And we're doing it in collaboration with our partners and stakeholders. Our government is committed to improving marine safety and responsible shipping and to protect Canada's marine environment. Thank you.